Welcome back, travelers of the internet, to Bright Helm Recording. This is your host, Master Barco, playing The Pillars of Eternity 2. And we left off in Sayuka. I just left it. And um, all of a sudden, I don't remember this, uh, this, this difficulty here. Uh, but I also have Malnage. You may have remembered her. Uh, she was after Romaro. And I think we're going to have to deal with her now. Uh, so let's, let's see. Yeah, she wants to she wants to fight. You have barely cleared Sayuka Harbor when a sleek half galley appears off your port bow. It rides high in the water and fast, but keeps its distance as it approaches land. Seraphin watches the ship passage from the bulwark, expression grim. When the ship turns to pursue you, you recognize it as Malnage's vessel, the misery's delight. Its cannons don't seem primed and it aims to come alongside rather than set up for a broadside run. Looks like the High Queen... <clears throat> Goodness. <clears throat> My voice. Looks like the High Queen Sea Devil be wanting words, Cap. Not sure if that'd be good or ill, but at least it'll mean she ain't on so you. Seraphin's ears angle slightly back and he massages the bridge of his nose. As the misery's delight comes alongside, Malnage stands on the railing, one gray-furred hand wrapped tight about a thick hemp line. She bows low, doffing her hat, and then tosses it to one of her deckhands. She about to dive across? I'm thinking so. Funny seeing you here, Captain. Especially since we've tracked Romaro to this very rock. Ain't trying to steal the bounty, are ya? What was it I said before? Kindly fuck off? Hey, the dear wooden motto. Used to have that on the coat of arms long time back. With a quiet snort, she shakes her head. Funny. I'd have thought a watcher would have had better instincts than siding with a known traitor. She shakes her head in an approximation of sadness, but doesn't bother hiding her grin. Fuck it. We'll deal with you first, then go have a little chatsy with Rimaro. No quarter, lads and lasses! Weapons slide free of holsters and sheaths as Malnage's crew attacks. Well, that ain't no biggie. Nice combat music we got here, the soft rocking of the sea. Well, I suppose that's more realistic. Oh, he immediately paralyzed Tonk there. Okay. Well, we pretty much cleared them out, didn't we? That didn't take much. Good job, Chupac. And... The fight's over. Wow. That was... Almost uneventful. Sure. Well then, um, aye, aye. I guess let's get back onto the the seas. So since we're running into lots of higher leveled zones, like Asango here says, you know, two levels higher than my level, and other quests and stuff like that, I think it's time that we just sort of explore the world and maybe take down bounties. I bet no move the Marauders a bounty, and it doesn't look like they're too high a level. So there's going to be a lot of um, emptiness in this video, I guess. But I'll try to provide some commentary here and then as we uh, travel about the world and explore this map in full and um, get some more experience in leveling up. I'll see you there. My oh my, this, this past weekend I was on that Stardew Valley grind. Probably got like 30 plus hours playing it. And oh my goodness, I was trying out the Stardew Valley expanded mod. And my goodness, on Ginger Island when I found, uh, what's his name, Lance? 
Oh my goodness. I was such a simp for that man. So grab the the tea, girls. Let's let's have a talk about him. So Lance starts off kind of mysterious like and immediately just gives you his schedule for some reason and is like I I'm, I'm not too afraid of being too forward with you. So here's my schedule, you know, and and essentially is pretty much okay with you stalking him, which is a bit weird and red flaggish, but that didn't turn me away. Um but what did pull me more towards him was the way he talks to me and the way he uh sort of is very soldierly about the way he uses words like let's go on this patrol along this very beautiful scenic route and ogle at the, the beauties of the world together another thing that i found like really sweet about him besides him calling me mysterious and very interested in me was like he was also worried about me and my health because he knew i was an adventurous one that liked to go and kill monsters and whatnot he was always like oh did you take enough life elixirs with you and here, here's some more life elixirs like the dude straight up gave me like 24 i think life elixirs to like explore around the highlands which is part of the mod um but also it, it is just the way he kind of like cares for me you know so some extra context on lance he is this hot stud who is also a battle mage which is you know like a bit better than just the, the plain old wizard and um, he, he is also an adventurer of sorts. And so he, he understands how dangerous it can be uh, doing this. So he, he knows that I need life elixirs as opposed to just, um, I, I don't know, like everyone else is like, okay, here's some energy tonics. Here's some food, you know, which could be helpful in its own regards. But life elixirs, oh my goodness. So much better when you take a lot of hits like I do. Another cool thing about him is he's a he's a monster researcher, and uh, at one particular heart event, if you if you know Stardew Valley, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, at one particular heart event, he is um he he kind of wants to bring you along on some research, and so he he says he casts this protection spell on the the both of you, and just starts teleporting you around. The, the highlands into all these beautiful scenic spots and we get to watch these monsters just go about their lives we get to watch two slimes fuck and um, make a little baby slime and it, it was just super super sweet of him uh, because afterwards after the, the spell ran out fuck just misclicked there uh, but after the spell ran its course uh, he then is like, alright, it's time for us to get out of here. And, you know, you take his arm and you teleport right out of there. Soon there came the time when I gave him a bouquet of flowers and improved our relationship even further. Um, for after that, we had a heart event where he took me to Fable Reef, which is where his Adventurer's Guild is. And there we, we had this nice little, like, date out where we got to see torpedo fish. We got to go all over the island with the other adventurers and see all kinds of cool sights. Uh, very kind of tropical feel to it. Oh, goodness gracious. Dangerous place there. Um, oh, shoot. Where was I? I completely lost track of myself. Um, right. We were on a, a, a date, so to say. And on that date... Uh, we eventually, you know, night comes and we head to a private bedroom, right? It was there on that bedroom, or in that bedroom, not on the bedroom, uh, that he then was like, Oh, I'm so tired after such a long day here. And um, decides to undress himself. And th the dialogue box down at the bottom added in that he has a six pack, right? So he has a six pack, right? And he says, Oh, I don't know if there's enough room in this bed because it's a single bed as opposed to a double bed. And with all that, I said, I think we could make it work. So what do you know? We both fit into the, the single bed and uh, he he eventually, you know, starts getting a bit closer. He's like, oh, oh, Barkle. And then we 
fucked. And boy, by the time that man filled me up with his manly warm fluids, I knew. I had to divorce Leah and get rid of the kids. I do up. So the, the marriage comes along and, you know, the, the, Leah and the other two kids are, you know, they're turned into doves. They're gone. It's fine. Um, but we eventually decide to um, marry, uh, me and Lance, that is. Um, going all over the place because the uh, butterflies in my stomach are fluttering just thinking about it. And even in marriage, he's still so romantic. He is the uh, an adventurer, so he is constantly going off and, and to, to do work and stuff. But he has lines of dialogue that's still so romantic, like, Oh, we should build a fire and curl up next to it. Or, you know, lines such as, Oh, I'm so tired from all this adventuring that I could just take a nap right in your lap. I almost forgot about the little quest he has you do. Uh, because he has very little farmer experience, and there's these new, like, monster seeds and fruits. Or, uh, vegetables? They're monstrous produce that comes off a farm, right? And he, he has no idea how to do farming, and so he asks for your assistance in doing it. And the, the way he... his dialogue just kind of, like, gives you so much credit. And he's very thankful for you for that, and the, all the adventurers of his guild are thankful for that, and he's he's thankful to you for helping him do his research and stuff like that. So he's not, like, just, just a romantic. Like, he does have work, and he is, like, a serious person. But regarding his farmer skills uh, in our, our marriage, he does like to get outside and try to help with the, the farming. He'll say, oh, I watered some crops for you, but little does he know that I already have iridium sprinkler systems just capable of taking care of everything for me but it's really cute to me that he tries to do some help oh the way i traded a happy stable life for a wandering man totally worth it and he actually cooks he's cooked me like man like six different meals i remember he made me a farmer's lunch one time i remember he made uh, triple shot espresso another time. He made me, what, sticky mango rice? He, he made me way more dishes. Leah has only ever made me salads. It's like, oh, hey, dear, I heard you were hungry. Here's a salad. And, like, I could only go for so long on just salad alone. Like, I need a little bit more variety in my diet. And he understands that. He appreciates me, so I'm going to appreciate him. Because he takes care of me, because he does that adventuring life is dangerous. He worries about my health so much that he still goes to the Adventurer's Guild and picks up life elixirs. And he, he hands them to me very comically, like individual dialogues where he's like, Oh yeah, and Marlin asked me to give you this one, and this one, and here's another one, and this one. Oh yeah, and don't forget about this one. Goodness, the more that I think about Leah, the more I realize that uh, she was just some yokel uh, that that had not much romance. It's like she's kind of basic, right? Oh, goodness, that's a tough one, ain't she? Like, Leah was alright whenever, like, w when it was discussing her art and stuff like that. Like, there wasn't much romance to it, I guess. Like, it was all about her and her dreams and stuff like that. Which, which is fine. Go after your dreams and stuff like that. But, man, after that flight of romance, whew, the butterfly is fluttering in my stomach. I, I wanted more of that. I got, a bit, I got a bit thirsty. Now, as far as children go, I don't know if he would be a very good father. Because he is, you know, the, the adventuring one. And so am I. So maybe no children would be the best. Because, you know, I didn't really, you know, be involved in... in the children with Leah, I kind of just came home, you know, give this kid a pat on the head, and then went to, you know, somersault into bed. That was about it. And with two fathers essentially doing the same thing that I was doing with Leah, I, I just, I felt like it'd be better if the kids were, you know, non-existent, out of the picture, stuff like that. Now, while Lance might be the, uh, sort of wandering type of person, he does tell me where he's going to be. 
uh, all the time. And sometimes he'll say, you know, I'm not going to be back until tomorrow, you know, and stuff like that. And that might be a big red flag for some people, but for me, it's not so much because he's honest about it. He said, yeah, I'm going to be away because adventurers built business because that is his, you know, profession. He is a monster hunter, a monster researcher. Uh, sorry, and he does have to go and train others in the ways of magic and stuff like that, right? He even tried uh, decorating my, my home from time to time. Uh, Lance, that is. Uh, he would just, like, order a chair from somewhere. I don't know where he gets the chair, but he would just plunk it down right here. And he's all like, yeah, I added this piece of furniture to the house. What do you think? You know, Leah's never done that. Maybe she's done it for other people, but she's never done it for me. And, you know, with that chair, I was like, you know what? This is a good spot for a table. And then we put a little model ship on top of it. And it was nice when we put a lantern next to it. Really, really gave the, the room some more feeling to it, right? Instead of just this big empty husk. Lance is now a more proper member of the Valley, too. Uh, he attends the festivals now. And recently we went through the, uh, the flower dance festival. And he, he, he was willing to be my partner and danced with me forgot about how Lance was interested in my magical talent and was allowed me to practice around with some magic artifacts like a wand that allowed me to teleport and he eventually gave me a, a wand that classifies itself as a sword that is supposedly supposed to teleport enemies far far away from you um, but it, it, it works a little funkily uh, in a good way, though. It does very little damage, but it does kind of just teleport. I'm doing teleport with heavy quotations. Um, teleport enemies away. But that was another one of those reasons as to why I was so mysterious to him, and he was so interested in me. It's for my magical talent and my ability to speak with Junimos, his little apple folk. It's like he's given me attention that I've just never had in my life, so I just feel more... more... more uh, attracted to him, I guess. Maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe it's a good thing. I I'll let you be the judge of that. The point of all this being is that Lance is a, is a nice 10 out of 10 in my books. Well done, whoever made Stardew Valley Expanded. And with that, we've turned in a few more bounties and leveled up a few times. Maybe we'll be more prepared for uh, the, the next time... We, we come back to another episode. This episode, however, is just... Oh my goodness. Good luck to Hindsight Barkle whenever he does this. I wasted like three, four hours of time and maybe only... I don't know, I'd guess like 20 minutes of entertainment, maybe? I don't know. But, you know, he's never failed me before, so... Until next time. Hola, amigo! Oh my, that... That Barco fellow's a real strange fellow, isn't he? Huh? But he keeps me flowing in coins, so I'm gonna keep him enabled. I'm gonna put a like on this video and comment down below what I like about the... Ah, uh, weird smut. <laughs>